Hi everyone, T.A. Barron here and I'm delighted to welcome you back into my writing room for another chapter of Tree Girl. Here we go, chapter 14. For some time, Anna and Sash lay on their backs in the moss, quiet as the trees themselves, just watching. One by one, every leaf and needle and twig sparkled with the last day's light, gleamed for just a while, and then faded into darkness. In the row and branches above them, the eyes of a nesting thrush glowed an eerie orange. Anna turned from the deepening shadows to the boy beside her. Are your, uh, people somewhere near? The Drumolos are here, all right, he answered, but they are waiting for what comes next. He chortled. It happens only once a year on High Hallow Eve, and it's something I'm sure no human has ever witnessed. Until now, thought Anna. The tension in the air increased. The hair on the back of her neck prickled and goosebumps swelled on her arms. The sky seemed ready to split open in a storm, but she had never known a storm like this. Slowly, the last blush of sunlight disappeared. Anna shivered, and not just from the chilly air. She slid across the moss until her shoulder touched her friend's. Just then, the lowest leaf on the rowan's lowest branch started to quiver. It trembled ever so slightly at first, and then faster and faster. Next, more leaves higher on the tree started to shake as if touched by the same swelling wind. Except there was no wind. Not that Anna could feel it. Like Sash, she sat up, clasping her knees, watching. What was happening? All around them, trees shivered and quaked to the hidden wind. Then came a single low-pitched note from somewhere in the forest. Like a great wooden horn it blew, with a sound so deep that it shook the very ground. And shook Anna, too somewhere under her skin. Another note came, somewhat higher, ringing like a faraway chime. Then another, and then another. Soon the whole forest filled with this chorus, blown and bonged and whistled. The notes rang out, echoing from every grove, rolling in a great river of sound. As the notes lifted higher, so did the trees, their boughs raised upward like thousands of arms. And as the notes fell lower, burly roots stirred and dug deeper into the soil. A new wind gathered, a wind that moved the air as well as the trees. It wailed through the forest, shaking elmwood and oak, hawthorn and beech. Leaves and cones and flakes of bark spun all about. The air smelled of cedar sap and walnut oil. Branches tapped and creaked and shushed, joining with the chorus in one united call. This was the call of the forest itself, its truest cry, its deepest voice. Anna was sure of it. Aye, this was the voice of the wild woods alive. She glanced over at Sash and he met her gaze. His green eyes sparkled as if embedded with stars. High Hallow Eve had arrived. Suddenly Anna turned, a face right there in the bark of the rowan tree beside them. She stared at the face as it sprouted from the trunk, her whole body tensed, and yet this face looked very different from the one she'd seen before in the forest. This face was round and cheery, with huge eyes and a wide, wrinkly mouth. And despite the deepening darkness, the eyes shone with their own inner light, 
a greenish glow that looked like moonbeams on leaves. Anna watched, holding her breath. Here was a tree spirit, right here, about to emerge from its home. The Rowan's face bulged outward, swelling like a burl on the trunk. Then came two long-fingered hands, a belly as round as the tree itself, and a pair of bumpy feet. Slowly, the figure pulled apart from the trunk, oozing out from the gaps in the bark. Finally, with a moist sucking sound, it came free. Standing on his own at last, the fat little fellow raised his arms above his head and started to dance. He slapped his feet on the tree's roots so hard his round belly jiggled. With a broad wink at Sash, he twirled himself around, howled with joy, and then twirled again, faster than before. All around, spirits emerged from their trees, pulling themselves out of knot holes, through chinks in the bark, or up from roots. Right away, they too started dancing. One elder spirit, as knobby as the old oak where he lived, spun himself in so many circles that he fell to the ground with a thud and a dizzy grin. Pale-skinned birch spirits threw aside their dangling braids and turned cartwheels and somersaults on the forest floor. Above Anna's head, a thin girl hung with both hands from a branch. She wore a suit of summer grasses that covered even her fingers and toes. As she swung slowly to and fro, her long hair fluttering across her arms, she looked every bit as graceful as a young elm. Anna didn't know which way to look. It was all so real and yet so amazing. While the drumolos danced, the strange music swelled even louder. The wind swelled too, swirling and gusting through the forest. Needles and twigs and leaves filled the air. Everywhere, saplings stomped their roots to the rhythm, while older spirits swayed to each and every note, rowing the air with their branches and Anna could feel the beat pulsing in her own bones. Someone grabbed Anna's wrist. Sash, he pulled her right into the revelry, whirling her around the rowan. Hands held tight, they jumped and spun and kicked their legs high. Anna threw back her head and laughed. I laughed just for the thrill of it all. Oh, Sash, she leaped over the shaggy head of a cedar who had sat down to rest. I love this, I do. Not bad, he crowed. With some more practice, you could almost keep up with me. Then let's practice all the time, she said as they twirled past a family of elms who were spinning in unison. Here she was, dancing with the very creatures she'd thought were ghouls. Sash, this is the best day of my life. Just wait until tomorrow, he shouted when we will go up to the willow together. And when you find out... Wait, she interrupted suddenly. Her dancing slowed. I've been thinking. I want to go up there alone. Really? Really. Something tells me it's better that way. Just me and the willow. I'm, I'm not sure why. Just that it's better. He shook his sandy locks. Well, all right then but you won't have nearly as much fun without me. Aye, that's true, she squeezed his hand. That's always true. Just then, someone dropped a wreath of white berries on her brow. She let go of Sash and spun around to see who had done it. Before her stood a gnarled old fellow with a crooked grin. He wore a floppy hat studded with cones, and he bowed stiffly to Anna. And she caught a familiar smell both tart and sweet. Burl! She threw her arms around the neck of her old friend. He wrapped his own leathery arms around her, and they started dancing a bouncy sort of jig. Now there, me girl, ho, 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 ho! Me thought you might not know me. Oh, Burl, I would always know you. He shook his head to the thumping beat, spraying some cones from his hat. "'Tis good to see you so free, me girl." She whirled herself around and danced all the faster. Sash tapped her shoulder. He bowed to old Burl and then pulled Anna into a new freewheeling frenzy. Her bare feet flew above the ground, hardly touching before they flew again. 
Like all the others, they bromped along into the night. Sometimes they danced as a pair, and sometimes as part of a long, twisting vine that wound its way among the trees. And sometimes Anna just danced alone, twirling herself around and around in the light of the rising moon. And when at last the festivities ended, she continued to dance in her dreams. Thank you.